Hi, everyone. So thank you for coming, and I uh, hope you enjoy the Open Free Summit till now. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is about power saving and NAV, even if it shouldn't go pretty well together. So I'm Christophe Fontaine, and I'm part of Red Hat. What is challenge? Because with NAV, the constraint is extremely simple and complex at the same time. Simple because one packet in means one packet out. That's complex because you have to do that maybe 5, 10, 20 million packets per second. So how do we reduce carbon footprint while maintaining that 5.9 uh, HA? Basically, 5.9 HA means only a few minutes of unplanned downtime per year. How do we achieve that? Basically, you have an active passive system or um, a system which is not used at full capacity. And this really means a lot of cores just idling, waiting to work just in case. Of course, we talk a lot about carbon footprints. It really depends on the energy mix, because in France, um, we like to have a lot of decarbonated um, energy, so that's 70% nuclear, not in 20% um, renewable, but that's not only that when we talk about carbon footprint. It's about other manufacturing and also um, what we can do to improve that. Of course, on the manufacturing part, we cannot do anything, let's be honest. But what can we do to improve the actual consumption? Of course, the workload scheduling, but that's the responsibility of the VNF or orchestrator. We do have the ability to optimize the VNF itself but as the infrastructure provider, honestly, we can't do much. So on which layer are we able to um, act? Basically, that's the infrastructure layer. That's what we provide to the uh, VNF vendors. And so the real goal is to reduce the individual power node usage. So what I'm going to present is a very small system because it only has six cores with hyperthreading. And so we will be using, of course, Open vSwitch with OVS VDK with a 10 gig NICs. And uh, to inject traffic, we will be using T-Rex on another set of cores. So show me the numbers, of course. But first, how do we gather the power consumption? Uh, the first element would be to have some kind of smart plug or multimeter. And that's great for home lab. But let's be honest, it's not realistic in a data center. So we do have, and we all have, two tools that we can already use. The first one, of course, is IPMI. Connecting to the BMC, you can just gather the uh, power consumption of your server, power supply by power supply. By the way, just by tuning the uh, power supply and the way you uh, configure the uh, power supply, whether it's balanced or uh, optimized mode, you can save up to five watts just with one BIOS tuning. The other uh, way to gather data is to use uh, the PCM tools and PCM power. That way you will be able to gather socket by socket the power consumption of your CPUs. So I do have at home um, HPDL uh, Gen 9. So what can we achieve at the lowest possible power consumption? So we do have uh, some BIOS um, and UFI configurations, which is called static low power. So basically, you just scale down the CPU frequency and uh, other tunables, such as the PCI speed. You limit yourself to the Gen 1. And you can have very good numbers. You can go as low as 9.5 watts idling. But let's be honest. With this kind of performances, you cannot go very far. With T-Rex uh, here, we can not even achieve 6 million packets per second. Just a quick reminder, for a 10 gigabit interface with 64 byte frames, you need 14 million packets per second to be line rate. So that's far from being enough. So what happened when we enabled the NAV tuning? Basically, um, you use the, the static high power mode, which use the fixed 2.6 gigahertz on my platform without any turbo. You use the Tundi CPU partitioning profile and that the all fans out, all on, and you don't have any kind of control over the pitch size from the software perspective. You don't even expose them. Uh, as a matter of fact, you even disable the uh, CPU frag driver, the Intel CPU frag driver. And when you just boot up without any workload or OVS running, you are already using 34 watts 
And quick reminder, that's really compared to the 9.5 watts that we used before, only for the CPU parts. So, um, let's try to do a live demo and pray for the gods of live demo. Um, I'm logged into uh, my platform, and as you can see right now, uh, what do we have on, on the left? On the left, that's the traffic generator, and if I just try to inject some traffic, I'm doing something uh, realistic. I will not go up to 100%. I'm just running at 10 million packets per second, so five per port. So we'll just wait for a couple of seconds, and as you can see right there, no packet loss, of course, hopefully. That's what uh, TuneD is for. On the upper right side, uh, we can see the CPU power monitor uh, showing whether the um, cores are actually working or sleeping. So that's why you have on the top right C1, C1E, C3, and C6. Those are the sleep states of the uh, different cores. And for each sleep state, you have a higher latency to uh, wake up when you have something to do. And as you can see right now, with no packets, we are already consuming 38 to 39 watts on the CPUs. So how can we go lower? So I do have the CPU partitioning custom profile. And I will tell you what the magic after is. Magic basically right now is, hey, we can put these unused cores to sleep. So what should the <laughs> those cores just waiting to, to be working, we can just put them into sleep. And as you can see right now, we just reduce by three watts. But something you may not have seen is the CPU frequency of OVS, because now that we have less cores running at 2.6 gigahertz, we can have two L cores running at 3.2 gigahertz. And of course, this means the increased power consumption, and it doesn't make any sense. So. Let's disable Tubo Boost. Oops. Live demo, of course. Uh, so now we are at um, 35 watts, and um, 2.6. And now I will set the CPU frequency to 2.6 gigahertz. And as you can see, we are already reducing the power consumption to 27 watts. So that's great, that's a good starter. How can I go still lower? But of course, what really matters for NAV is the zero packet loss. So for every single tunable, I will restart T-Rex to verify that I still have this one packet in equal one packet out. So far so good. But still, that may not be enough. Um, we see that we do have those um, 2.6 gigahertz cores. With TuneD, what we'll also do is to set the CPU frag driver, either with disable it or with the uh, custom CPU frag driver that I have right now. at proxy MD line, you can see the Intel P state right there is set to passive. What does that mean? That means that the CPU uh, frag driver is actually using the Intel one, but in a way that we can configure it. So with CPU power, we can set the frequency governor to the on-demand mode. The on-demand mode will just scale up and scale down the CPU frequency for those cores, and these cores zero and six are just running Linux services, so we do not need them to be running at 2.6 gigahertz every time. They can just go to sleep. Also, what about the other cores? Um, from a user perspective, we could also set those frequency to 1.2 gigahertz. So on the frequency set, so I will just lower that, so this will be two to and the calls 8 to 10. Let's do that. Okay. So 
as you can see, I lowered here the cores which are not used. The power consumption didn't decrease much, but that's better than nothing anyway. And what can we do now? You can see that on the cores one and seven, OVSDPK is actually running on them, but no traffic is happening. So what can we do? OVSDPK by, def by definition will just pull the physical hardware queues whether we do have packets or not. So we used to have something very interesting back in the day which was interrupt mode. Let's enable that. So that's a new channel in uh, OVS that's still in pending in review, but as soon as we enable that, here it is, what do we get? We get 12 watts idling. So remember, we went from 38 watts down to 12 watts. But once again, what if we inject some packets? And I'll cross my fingers. Here it is, zero packet lost. Still running at 500 packets per second. Um, the frequency will be fixed at 2.6 gigahertz because as you may know with RoboBoost, every time you switch from one frequency to another one, you have a slight delay during the, which, well, we cannot process packets. That's about 10 microseconds, so that's uh, maybe at 10 million packets per second, 100 uh, packets, so this isn't a lot, but if you change frequency multi times per second, you may end into a situation where you will lose some packets and you will drop them. So, what's next? Um, as you can see, the obvious BDK um, NAPI mode, well, the patch is already uh, in review upstream by David Marchand. So, um, what do we have else? The custom Tune profile. We need the custom Tune profile. Um, what do we do? We enable C states, we re enable them, of course, and we also modify the uh, minimum performance counter from the CPU frag driver so that we can scale up and down from 1.2 GHz to 2.6 GHz on demand. And the last thing that we need to do as well is to enable those C states for the virtual machines. And how can we do that? Of course, um, we could do that with Nova so that Nova could uh, act on that. But um, what can we do today? Today, we can just put a libvirt hook in order to enable those C states on demand. Because as we are actually using CPU pinning, we know that those CPUs and those cores are dedicated to the virtual machine. So we can, uh, thanks to that little bit hook, just put that up and down as we need. So few words about software optimization. Sometimes we, I hear, hey, should we go with hyper-threading, yes or no? The answer is, of course, yes. Um, when we go from one PMD to another one, to two PMDs, the power consumption is only increased by 1%. The packet per second, on the other hand, goes up to 18%. And what about the pipeline complexity of, uh, uh, of open vSwitch? When we go from the, well, that's the look back to the normal action, well, we get 8%, no increase in power per consumption. So the depth of the pipeline is extremely critical. Then, what about a newer and weaker system? So if we, go, if we do the same kind of test, we go from th 90 watts down to 37 watts. That's pretty awesome. So, of course, the latest chips have better power getting capabilities, hopefully. So we can go even lower. And Chupa Boost may be evaluated carefully, as I showed you before. Thanks a lot. So we have less than one minute maybe for one question. Yes. Uh, is there any dependency on the NIC card that you're using? No, yes. So the, the question is, uh, is there any dependency on the NIC card um, for obvious VDK in tier mode? So yes, because we need the proper uh, support in the driver in the PDK. So that's why I was using the X710 for obvious VDK and the uh, Intel uh, um, Nyan technique for the traffic injection, yes but we're actively working for, uh, to, to enable that on other NICs. Well. Yes, I mean, 
Yes. Um, your API like um, patch. Yeah. Is it, um, is it something that is supported by CDK? Yes, so the question is, um, what is the, the support status of the NAPI? So that's the interp mode, so that's built-in DPDK. So within the DPDK driver, you need the support for interps, and then uh, within OVS, uh, David implemented that, yes. Uh, how long before this will be up for uh, The patch is under review. <laughs> so uh, hopefully very soon. I cannot guarantee anything about that. <laughs> Well, we're over time. Uh, thank, thank you very much and have a good summit.